Greetings. Um, I'm really excited to talk a little bit more, more, more about core values and uh, talk about the future of our core values and the process we went, just went through to refresh them. But first, I'm gonna go a little bit back in time and talk about where it started. Um, we founded the company in 2013. Um, here's a, a, a quick snapshot of some of the early office space. And as I often tell employees, when we first sat down, kind of January 1st, 2014, we set a set of core values. Um, from there, two years later, we revisited those values, and that really brings us to, to where we are today. These are the seven core values, and as I, I've shared in all of the new hire onboardings, we started with four, kind of removed one, added four more, and we ended up with seven. And these values have been critical to building the culture up until this point. And we've leveraged these values for helping determine um, how we operate as a business, but also um, what sort of individuals um, are fit best to uh, help advance the company. Um, but as we all know, we've grown a lot since those early days. Here's a picture of our last kickoff, which was um, uh, over a year ago. So that this picture actually is small, very small, in contrast to, to where we are today, we're at least uh, 100 uh, individuals more, we're closer to 600 employees. This picture was somewhere in the, the 400 range. And um, we're continuing to grow. You know, as, as we've uh, already discussed numerous times, um, we are planning to add 400 pendozers this year. We've already added over 100 in our first quarter. And it's important that um, one, we look at our core values and we continue to um, refresh them um, to ensure that everyone understands their definition. You know, we, when I talk to folks, we'll get, well, I think this means this, or I think this means that, or now we have you know, employees in different countries, so how we translate really, really matters. So, so we think it's really critical that one, we're all aligned on what they mean, why they're important, and how, what they look like in action. You know, what are the behaviors? How, do, how, do we, how does this influence and inform how we work? So what we did was, is um, we kicked off a process early last quarter um, that really focused on the, um, a, a refresh of our values. First, we surveyed all the employees at the time. We broke into small teams at our company kickoff. We um, elicited an amazing amount of raw materials, um, what people thought was working and not working, what, what, where there was shared understanding and where there wasn't shared understanding. And we created a cross-functional working group to help take this raw data and synthesize it down to a set of recommendations for how we go forward. Um, through that process as well, they've um, interacted with the executive team and the C team to continue aligning this work. And of course, the questions we ask these teams are, um, do these behaviors um, engage and retain the right talent for the business? Do these behaviors reflect how we wanna serve customers? And will these behaviors help Pendo ultimately win and scale? Uh, with, with these questions, we brought together this group, and I just wanna say thank you to those who are in this group. This group is Cross office, it's cross departmental, it's cross functional, it's diverse in nearly every uh, definition of the word. And they were chartered with looking at our values and making recommendations for how to advance them going forward. And with that, um, I'm excited to introduce to you our revamped core values. So the first one um, is respect our lives outside of work. And this is um, uh, a refresh of promote life outside work, which was one of our um, original values. And uh, let me read to you what it says. It says, we bring our whole selves to work and celebrate what makes each other unique. We encourage each other to take the time to do what refills our energy. And, and this, is, um, this is really the intent of this. One, we wanna make sure each and every one of you um, has things that they can recharge on, refill with, um, 
you know, Pendo's a long time journey. The last thing we want to do is have people burn out. So it's incumbent on each and every one of us, me included, to check in with ourselves from time to time and do what we need to do to, to keep going, right? I think the other big change or big uh, addition to this value was recognizing this whole notion of bringing our whole selves to work. This is something we've been living for years that hasn't been explicitly codified in any value. And whether it's um, celebrating um, our affinity groups, celebrating our hobbies, um, you know, since the early days of Pendo, we used to have gaming night in the office where it would bring together people who like to game any kind of game across all departments. These types of hobbies, um, they really it bring us all together and remind us that there is life outside of the day-to-day -day work. So, so respect our lives outside of work. The next one is be direct and transparent. This is actually one of the most fundamental changes that we've, um, uh, we're making to our values. And, and it's really taking two values, brutal honesty and be transparent and connecting them together. I'll read to you the definition. As individuals, we are timely, candid, and respectful in providing feedback, even when it's hard or comfortable to do so. As a business, we lean towards sharing more information than less. So let me break this down. I, I do think it's important. Well, first off, there's a lot of feedback around brutal honesty. That it was the word brutal, if you look at the dictionary definition, it's rough, it's harsh, too harsh, right? Um, and we felt like as we were bringing on more and more people, it was getting more and more difficult to communicate the intent of this value. The intent of this value is to be direct, to be candid to give people um, potentially difficult feedback. And you'll see here it says, even when it's hard or uncomfortable to do so. Look, if I'm gonna give someone feedback on a piece of work, I realize that it may hurt someone's feelings, whether it's intentional or not. It's hard to do that, but it's critical for that person to understand where, what's going on. Like, is this good or this bad? It's, it's impossible for each and every one of us to get better if people aren't being direct with us. This is one of my biggest frustrations um, that I see is, is people are afraid to say the hard thing. We are encouraging you to not be afraid. Um, do it with me, do it with the executive team, frankly, do it with anyone at, at the office. It's important to realize that being direct isn't unidirectional. It's not simply top down. It can be bottom up. And if you've been here for a while, you'll see some of our AMAs can be pretty darn direct. Um, continue doing that. That is absolutely the 10. So while we don't say brutal honesty uh, anymore, um, the intent is to, to deliver the hard news. Um, the second piece of this is actually a bit distinct and different. It's about transparency. It's about sharing information. Um, in general, we lean to sharing more than less. If we had a choice between more or less, I'm almost always gonna pick more. Um, and the reason is simple. The more information each and every one of us have, the better decisions we're gonna make. I've said that at every new hire onboarding uh, since we've started is that one of the biggest differences between people in different organizations or levels is access to information. And I wanna break down those differences. I want you to have the same information I have. And I believe that if you do that, you will make, we'll all make approximately the same decisions. So that's be direct and transparent. Uh, the second one, uh, the next one is maniacal focus on the customer. Um, and this is uh, the same as it was before as far as naming. We did make an adjustment to the definition. It now says if there's an opportunity to improve the customer or stakeholder experience, we do it. So the addition here is stakeholder. And this is to, to um, enhance the value to recognize the fact that many of us at the company don't simply interact with um, external customers. Many of us have internal stakeholders and treating them as the customer and being maniacally focused on helping them perform their role is, is a critical part of the business. You know, I, I've said long ago that we're a software company. We do two things, we build software and then we sell it. Everyone else at the company is helping someone build it better or sell it better. That's what we do. It's really that simple. And if, so if that person is an is internal stakeholder, 
it's critical that we maniacally focus on helping them perform the role because they're often the ones dealing with the customers. Bias to act. Um, so we adjusted and improved the definition of here. It's still the same bias to act value that we all know and love. It says we take the initiative to get things done, collaborate, and go above and beyond the call of duty. So the collaboration here is an adjustment just to remind folks that now at six, nearly 600 people, um, there may be other people that you need to collaborate with. When we were five, 10 people, you're probably on your own, but at our size and scale, um, be cognizant of whose job you are potentially biased to acting and think about ways to get others involved in it. Show me the data. No change to this value. But what it really means for me is, is leveraging data to make better decisions. And if we can't find data, let's run experiments. Let's try to get data to do that. Um, you know, I, I've long said that um, this value has helped inform uh, initiatives like our freemium initiative, some of the Pendant for Startups uh, work that was um, really a combination of bias to act and show me the data. The people have um, culled data, proposed initiatives, and it's really made the company better. So we are an analytics company, we sell it, let's use data to make decisions. Each and every one of you have access to Looker, use it. I encourage you to log into it, look at the data, that this is how all of us should be help guiding uh, our future decisions. Uh, act like owners. This is actually an adjustment of language from freedom and responsibility. I think this is an important one. Um, in the past, I've often said that freedom and responsibility is, is basically the acting like an adult um, value. It is the, you know, don't do stupid things at work, you know, don't drink and drive, um, know your limits. Um, I'll often say things like spend the company's money like your own. But what I think is really a nice adjustment in recognition is it's not just a matter of being an adult. That's kind of table stakes and expected out of all of us. Like being adults kind of a low bar uh, for, being at, um, for being at the company. What we really mean and really, really want is for everyone to act like owners. And guess what? You all are owners. So I think it's important to put your owner hat on very, very often and say, is this what's best in Pendo? I'll read to you the definition. We use good judgment in our actions, decisions, and implicitly have the trust of our colleagues to be able to do so. We are flexible, we get our job done. Look, this is still all about, we don't want to write a ton of rules. We don't want to, to be incredibly prescriptive um, about what goes on and how we operate. But if each and every one of us acts like an owner, we're gonna, generally speaking, do the right thing. I wanna add another story about this because I think it's critically important as we think about the, these values. Um, people often ask me, like, what's your definition of politics in the workplace or being political? And one of the, my favorite definitions I heard in my past is that being political is when you're putting your personal interests above the interests in the company. And I think we're finally at a certain size at 600 people that it's easy to somehow confuse these two. And, and um, this is, you know, at our size and scale, we're starting to see more questions around this. But I would encourage each and every one of you is, um, is this what's best for the company, right? Again, put your owner hat on um, and you are all owners in the business. We, um, that is by design. So um, it's critical that we all think this way. And it's a great reflection of it by adjusting our values uh, to say so. The last one's a brand new value and it's called win together. Uh, and I'll read it. We succeed together and challenge each other to grow. We collaborate and support one another as a team. We don't hesitate to lend a hand to our colleagues when needed. This is one that, that came through loud and clear in um, a lot of our conversations um, a lot of the feedback. You know, one of the unique aspects of our culture is that when you say, hey, can I get help on this? Everyone rushes um, to help out, to, to lend a helping hand. There's very little of this, uh, no, that's not my job at Pendo. And I think many of us worked in places where that is a, that is a very common refrain. Um, but I would encourage you to like, look, we absolutely win together. 
Um, all of our successes and all of our failures um, are collective ones. And um, if you get asked, I mean, like help. Um, we're all getting better, we're all, we're all improving. And I think this is um, a fantastic addition to our values because we're already doing this today, but this really helps um, you know, cement it down so that as we're recruiting new employees, as we're growing in other areas, we can look for individuals who exhibit this sort of uh, mindset. So look, um, that is Pendo's revised seven core values. You will be seeing more in this. I am very uh, excited. Um, this is gonna help us take us from 600 employees to 1,000 and beyond. It's getting better clarity, better consistency, and making sure these values reflect um, how we're operating and how we wanna operate going forward. Thank you.